えー、皆様ご来場ありがとうございます。えあのー、本日、えー A フレームというですね、あの不思議なパーカッション電子パーカッションのですね、えっとセミナーをやらせていただきますんで、えー、ぜひ楽しんでいってください。ええー、世界的に、えー、名の知れた、えー、スーパープレイヤー、えー、ピートロケット、えー、とピートさんが、えー、あのいらっしゃって、えー、しっかり、えー、皆さんに、えー、プレイももちろんですけども解説もしていただきます。はい。であのー。4時半ぐらいであの終了予定というふうにもともと書いてあったんですけども、えっと、ピートさんは、えー、おしゃべりです。<笑>はい、<笑>なので、えっと、ちょっとそれから長くなる可能性がちょっとあるということを先にお伝えしておきます。あと、はい、あの質問ももちろん受け付けますので、まあ、もうすでに質問あるという方、えー、準備していただくのと,、えー、とあとは、えー、やってるうちにあの質問ありましたらあのちゃんと、えー、覚えておいていただいてそれでご質問いただければと思います。はい、まずは、えー、とこちらですねはい、え、あの通訳でやっていただきます。え、橋本洋介です。よろしくお願いします。はい、えっ、ー、とパーカッショニストさんまで、はい、え、あのフラメンコとか結構やっておられる。あ、そうです、ね。え、はい、いうふうにお聞きしておりまして、はい。はい、よろしくお願いします。しいしますはい、ではあの私が喋っててもなんですので、え、ではあの登場していただこうと思います。じゃあピートさんお願いします。
It's uh, an honour to be here in, uh, in Tokyo, uh, representing ATV and be able to play this fantastic instrument, the A-frame. This has uh, actually become a very special uh, instrument for me. So the next piece, I'm using very little of the pedals. So 95% of everything is coming from the uh, A-frame. So with that last piece, that was all A-frame apart from a little bit of reverb and the distortion on the ocarina sound at the very end.
ありがとう。ありがとうございます。So, this actually, I'm going to tell you a little bit about you know, me with electronic instruments.、Mm -hmm. So, at home,、uh, I have a, a cupboard. This cupboard is completely full of electronic percussion. All these instruments I buy, and I don't use them, and I just put them in the cupboard. And so, It's、um, amazing for me to get、uh, an electronic percussion instrument that I can actually really love in the same way that I do an acoustic percussion instrument. So the A frame is not in the cupboard. It's one of my most valued instruments at the moment because I can do so much with this instrument, not just、uh, percussive.、Uh, Playing, but also melodic and very expressive、um, with the touch and the feel and all the elements. So, I'm going to take you through a little bit of a, a, a musical journey with some of my ideas for the instrument. Sometimes the ideas are, are melodic and exploring different sound worlds, and sometimes they are, you know, doing what I would do with a, an actual acoustic percussion instrument. So, the next piece.、Um, Features me playing、uh, almost in a contemporary percussion style arena. So I'm just using one sound on the, on the A frame.、Mm -hmm. oh, so we can see the instrument can be incredibly effective、mm -hmm. without、uh, necessarily always having to do many different things.、Uh -huh. This next piece features、uh, an instrument、mm -hmm. called、uh, the, the Gatam. And、uh, features me playing some South Indian rhythms in a way that I would with an acoustic percussion instrument.
Arigato. So this is based on a uh, South Indian, which is called the Gatam, and is a clay earthenware pot. This sound has become very similar than, than the Gatam, but it's not, it's one of the important things to um, emphasize is that I'm not trying to recreate an acoustic instrument. Uh -huh. I'm trying to create an electronic version. Yeah. So if we look at the individual tones that we have with this, four, four layers. Mm -hmm. Number one. Midas. <laughs> <laughs> The main tone, Gatam tone. Gatam tone. Main, main tone. Uh -huh. uh, no. Third one, nothing. Uh -huh. This one's nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Fourth one. Uh -huh. Acoustic sound of the mic. So we can combine all four sounds, mm -hmm. but sometimes you don't need to use all four sounds. Uh -huh. So just because there's four options doesn't mean we have to have all four sounding. One of the reasons that I wanted to, um, you know, make a sound like this, like the Gatam, mm -hmm. was that it's uh, an instrument that I can get to the same degree of sensitivity as with the actual acoustic instrument, which is very rare, an electronic instrument. Because of the polycarbonate head and, and the, the small mics inside the head, I'm going to go on to another piece. Yeah, the point is really, mm -hmm. um, is that for me, I feel with the, the use of the, the sensitivity of the heads, mm -hmm. the touch on the instrument mm -hmm. is the, the first part of the chain of events yeah. and the, the sensitivity, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. pressure sensitivity. Uh -huh. and what means I can really get to a, a lot of expression. The two methods of looping uh, on the first two tracks. Two method. The second method was looping no shikata, a looping tai. Looping no shikata. Looping no shikata. Yeah, the, the, the second one was with the pedal. So that was what we call live Looping Nashkata. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. And the first, the first one was um, what I call artificial looping. Artificial looping. Yeah. This the artificial looper. <laughs> the the iPhone. So sometimes if I'm playing, if I'm playing in a festival. I would often use this method without the pedals. Because then it's, especially when I've got percussion and drum set to sound check. It's like lazy man looping. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, actually, this is the first time in my life I've ever used a looping pedal live. I've never done it before, so it's a world premiere. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Because of the uh, feel of the instrument means that it gives me uh, direct access to be able to use a lot of different uh, percussion techniques. So for example, uh, in India there's something called the split hand technique, which involves splitting the hand into two striking units. The three-fingered striking unit and the one-fingered striking unit. So with a, with a lot of other electronic percussion that I've tried, it's impossible okay. to uh, actually use these techniques because of the feel of the drum and the response ah, yeah, doesn't yeah. work so well with the fingerings, the delicate fingerings. Ah, so luckily yeah. with the A-frag, you can easily get to the uh, mm. split hand technique and lots of different uh, techniques. hand technique with both hands, right hand split hand technique, left hand just single. Split hand technique with both hands. So the fingering, one, one, three, three. Indian technique. Indian technique. Based on Indian technique. So this, you you find this on, you find this on all Indian percussion. This technique. So I'm going to play a piece that shows some little bit of Indian technique, but not in a virtuosic manner. In a simple way. Demonstrate how this can be used, like as an accompanying instrument, as with another instrument, like with flute, for example. So this is with some some Indian bamboo flute. Ah, India, no. Bansuri, it's called, yeah. It's Bansuri. Bansuri, yeah. Yeah, and the sound that I've programmed for it is kind of a little bit like tabla.
about the Indian tabla is you have two drums, bass drum and a treble drum. So one of the skills of the tabla is how you play the bass, the open bass drum. So some of the rhythms feature sections where there's open bass drum and sections where there's no open bass drum. So using the pressure controller with the A-frame, I've managed to simulate that effect. No bass drum. Uh, uh, this uh -huh. And then open bass drum. Uh -huh. bass no bass drum. With the pressure. No bass drum. No bass drum. Bass drum. No bass drum. No bass drum. <laughs> so, to, just to re reiterate the the point mm -hmm. that what I'm not trying to do, uh -huh. I'm, I'm not trying to recreate uh -huh. tabla. What I'm attempting to do is make mm -hmm. a n different alternative uh -huh. version. So it gives a good um, mm -hmm. option to uh -huh. create some different sounds.
As a percussionist, mm -hmm. it's a very important part of my menu to be able to play uh, with lots of uh, different sounds, sometimes to be very obscure, uh, left, left field, weird. <laughs> I Pete, I said that in some of the drum festivals, when you're about to perform, some of the guys say, let's go watch the alien. <laughs> <laughs> but I had the tentacles removed from the, from the head. <laughs> Um, so, it's amazing to have a percussion instrument that I can also get into the same zone with. Um, so with the A-frame we can see from those last two pieces that we can have a very straightforward percussive role, traditional kind of percussive role for the instrument, or to make, you know, slightly weirder stuff as well. So at this point we'll do uh, some questions, I think. Yeah, I'm going to play another couple of pieces then. Right, right, okay, okay. Um, this next piece is kind of a mixture of uh, ancient and modern. So using the vocal syllables from India that date back to like 400 BC, mixed with the, the A-frame, 2018 AD. So together, 
Um, and I'd like to dedicate this to Iku and his family and his, his great um, father, Mr. Kakuhashi, who uh, was Kakuhashi. so instrumental in making this instrument and ATV. And it's deliberately prepared so that the A-frame sounds very um, computer-like. So is the contrast between, uh, between the two. One more piece, um, and one, one thing I'll say regarding you know working with electronics and, and doing different things, it, it's very important to keep a, a, a mental record of where you are with everything. So with with a lot of these pieces that have multiple sounds, I've spent quite a long time putting the the tone sets together so that they're in tune with each other and complement one 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 another. Some of the sounds I have to strip various components out so they work better with other sounds. And then you need to keep a record or a note of if you're going to be building pieces, you know, you kind of like have a set list for some of the sounds, which is what I've got here. Kind of like sequence, menu. And then you can easily, you know, when you're beginning to learn the pieces, which is what I'm doing here. 